Playing the Ace is a new web series from ALU's Academic Center for Excellence. Every week, we will be talking about elements and strategies that can help you develop as a learner. Join us and enhance your learning experience. Hello, and welcome to the very first episode of Playing the Ace. My name is Sabrina, and I'm your host and the assistant to the Academic Center for Excellence. We have a great show for you this week, and I have some wonderful people here with me today virtually. So, let's meet the table. Hello, my name is Diego, and I'm a graduate assistant in the Tutoring and Math Centers. Hello, my name is Jason, and I am a senior writing consultant at the MFD Writing Center. Hello, my name is Amy, and I am a senior writing consultant at the MFD Writing Center. Hi, I'm Dr. Kamara, and I'm the director of the Academic Center for Excellence in the Mary Francine Dennis Writing Center. Every week, we will feature a study tip, learning strategy, or some type of informational piece that will enhance your learning development. So let's uh, draw from the deck and get into this week's high card. Space is more than just the final frontier. Since March of this year, our lives and daily routines have been significantly changed by the global pandemic. Uh, and for anyone starting school this month, these adjustments come in the form of virtual classes or possibly hybrid flex courses for you college students. Uh, I know at Our Lady Lake University, our students are doing kind of a combination of things. Uh, for those younger students out there, some will only know their teacher through a Zoom or Skype call. That's the only introduction they may have for them for a while. This is quickly becoming our new normal. So how do we adjust for the need for space when we're asked to spatially distance or work from home? Whether it's to complete coursework or uh, participate in synchronous online courses or even asynchronous. You know, how can we best prepare for an academic year that looks like maybe primarily virtual? You know, at the start of this semester, our director, uh, Dr. Kamara, director of the Academic Center for Excellence, uh, she was asked to put together a handout with success tips and strategies for online learning. And one section when she asked for our feedback was, you know, that we wanted to make sure was in there was about space. Amy, I know that you are starting a new blog series on our WordPress site. Um, and I think, you know, what are you starting with this week? Well, for my first um, blog, uh, which is going to be a biweekly blog this semester, um, I took on the idea of space. And um, like many people you know, out there, um, I had a, a child uh, that was going to be starting school virtually. Um, at the same time, my husband and I are working from home. Um, so it's, it's interesting uh, to figure out you know, where we can all um, work, study, um, you know, in one house. We have six people in, in one house. And I think so many of our students are having that same experience. And it's not just one of identities. Uh, because as you mentioned earlier, um, it, going to work, there, there's this transition that happens. You, know, you go from your home persona to your professional persona. And for a lot of us, um, you know, we're, we're really used to working, you know, work working at work. Um, and then, you know, studying at a library or studying at a coffee shop. Um, but we're all now within the same space. And if we live with other people, there might be these conflicting identities and expectations and responsibilities. So you know, I am a writing tutor, um, an adjunct instructor, uh, but I'm also a mom. And now all of those identities that are existing in one space and what we're having to do is trying to establish boundaries and we're finding our own little nook in the house um, where 
we can do what we need to do. And it's a lot of trial and error. Um, one of the things that I discuss in the blog is how we, uh, the easiest thing was to create a work space. My husband working from home and I working from home, um, we turned one of our nurseries into an office. What was interesting is we really couldn't do other activities in there now. It's not some place where we want to hang out. It's not some place where I'd want to study. It really is just a work environment. And to be productive in other ways, we really do need to leave that. So I think that is something that students might also be encountering. What else do you guys think about when it when it comes to this new challenge of, of finding spaces where we can be productive in our homes? Well, if I may, Amy, um, you mentioned identities. And I thought of this as roles for students and really for any of us because we are transitioning into this new space, if you will, of, again, we don't have, as you mentioned, just a traditional employee role or identity, a mom, a parent, student. Some people are all of those things. And so how are we going to negotiate those roles within the space? We've also talked about negotiating space in general. Prior to COVID, we had a, a big discussion about it. But I looked at the term space being a loaded word now, it seems like, in different ways. We first, we always say, give me some space. Let me be who I need to be, kind of in that context of a generational divide. Or now we have the health issue of space. So now we have to have both of those things and other issues to deal with when coming home or coming home or any space that we're actually having to stay in for longer periods and define, like you said, ourselves in the space, define what we do, because all of that affects our learning abilities, our productivity, as you mentioned, Amy. And it's the new norm, though. It's just becoming a new norm, having to negotiate and find quiet space, or if you need light background noise, where that's white noise, having that really cool YouTube channel that has nothing but chill beats, <laughs> to go in the background to help you study or be productive. But for me, I'm learning about thinking of in terms of adjusting to new roles and tasks. By cre when, with not just the task of creating my space, but what do I do within my space? Because if you're at home and one of your roles and identities, if you will, is as a parent, you have to always, like it seems like, have one ear to the door, who's screaming, who's fighting. But if you're not in that role, what do you need? Do you need distraction? But that also, I think, also evokes the question of how do we evaluate and identify our own learning styles within a, right. a space that's non-traditional? It's non-traditional. I think that's another issue is things are just changing. Yeah, so I can definitely talk about that, how, like, as a student or even as a student now, it's hard to find out really, like, what is your, you know, the way that you want to study and how you best find out in that space because like it's a process to really know like what's the best environment for you to really be the most productive because some people really best study like in a library some people best study when they're alone some people like to have a lot of distractions around them and some people like to be in a completely like bare environment and like for me personally like i invest when i study like alone and there's just like barely anything around me but i know a lot of people who like their best are work really well when there's a lot of distractions and people are like constantly moving around them. And so it's just a really personal preference and you really just have, kind of have to explore those different areas. And I really didn't know that I worked best in those barrier environments until I kind of tried out all those different areas. And that's kind of something that you really have to kind of figure out. And it was, it was a hard process for me to kind of figure out that that was the best thing for me. And I think that's, that's the one thing that it's, if you don't have the kind of luxury to kind of have that bare environment and there's people all around you, it's something that you kind of have to make way with what you have. So if there's like, if you kind of see that you're kind of a disorganized person by yourself, and you see it like you kind of have clutter all around you, you just have to kind of take it piece by piece, I would say. Because you know? <laughs> yeah, like if Sabrina says that she's disorganized sometimes, 
like for example like if your backpack is like has a lot of stuff and clutter around it you just start with something small like you know probably with the pencil there's like something you know just maybe you say okay i'm just going to take out the pencils that don't work anymore those pens that don't work i mean that can be the first step to taking that next you know thing to kind of clearing your mind and getting that space to get a little more as a workable environment so dr k i mentioned at the beginning um that at the beginning of the semester, you constructed this tip sheet for um, five tips for success in online courses. And I know that when you, you know, you talk to kind of everybody about it, um, one of the big topics that we brought up was the space, right? Because we've all kind of had this on our mind, creating that space. Um, you know, what else, what else do we have for that? What else can you, can you help us with to understand like how important that space is? Well, we actually decided that creating a space had to be a number one point in being successful in an online college class. And, and that's because um, you have to go to a designated space, sometimes physically and mentally, um, where you can access the Wi-Fi, you can have your course material, um, uh, you're in a place that kind of clicks by habit into a place that says, I'm, I'm going to be doing my academic work here, or I'm going to be schooling in this place. Um, many of us drive into school, or we designate a time in the library. But in the pandemic, we don't have that option. So we need to be careful. And we need to be aware of some of the things that might seem easy enough as a space, like I have my own bedroom. So I'll just like hang out right here in my bed and, and watch my, my class. Well, that's not good because then you're never really getting into your space for thinking. You're kind of like muddying the water with the place that you rest. Or um, maybe the kitchen because I, I like the sunlight in there. And that might be great until you figure out people are coming in and out and chatting with you and getting their food. And, and then you realize maybe that hubbub isn't working for you. So you need to create that space, that corner, that place, that desk or that, um, you know, that table or, you know, area where you go. Um, and you have your books and your notebooks, and and it will keep you from multitasking when you really should be focusing on your class or your reading. Um, so you know you want to establish the discipline necessary to turn off other things to make your space that place for studying. I would say go so far as to. Turn off the social media. Enter your space and really try to get into the mindset um, of being in your college environment, maybe intellectually in the college environment, since you can't physically be there. Amy, I think you were talking about earlier about, um, and it's come up several times, the social aspect. What do we think about that, the, the whole social aspect of space? When I was a student and even as a professional, um, I had... I've had issues with anxiety about you know, deadlines and um, you know certain tasks. If it's a, a writing task, for example, or now you know it could be grading papers. And I have found that being home alone is not the most helpful for me in those situations. Um, and this is actually something that I suggest to students as well: is if there is something that you find you know unpleasant, is try to pair that with something that you do enjoy. So for me, that was going to coffee shops. So I would make these dates with myself to go to a coffee shop and do my work. So it would, you know, allow me to be amongst people. You know, I didn't feel like I was in, you know, solitary confinement until I did what I needed to do. Um, and it just, it felt like a more organic, natural, pleasant experience. And that's something that has been harder to replicate now that I can't do that. There are actually some options out there. If you're, some, if you're willing, you know, to accept the idea of virtual community. We've seen this with Zoom, for example. And I know that the Writing Center is developing um, an opportunity for 
you know, writing community. I am really glad that you mentioned that, uh, Amy. Thank you, because um, many professional writers are going through exactly what you're talking about. They found that community in a writing um, to write, maybe in a coffee shop, or maybe they would meet collectively in a space and just write so they could pause and share ideas. And what many of my friends who are professional writers have developed is what they call a writing cafe. And so in order to create the community you're talking about, um, the um, writing center decided let's create a writing cafe. Literally, let's have a schedule where there are blocks of our, our times where any student who wants to work on an individual writing assignment along other, alongside of other students who are working on a written task in their environment and their physical space can log in. They can make an appointment, log in, they can check in with the moderator and just say, hi, I'm starting a new writing assignment. Um, I think I'm going to set the goal to, to brainstorm and try and narrow my thesis. And the moderator will say, that's great. Here's some, here's some tips for brainstorming. Here's some tips about thesis. Have at it and, and check in with me along the way. And if anybody else in the cafe at the time has a suggestion, put it in there. Um, and then you write. You write. You talk about the writing process, you try things out, and you just write. It offers you a designated place, a place where you feel like you're in the company of other writers. Um, the moment when you really need to sound something off, you could put it in the chat, chat box. or um, And then you check out at the end of the hour, and you say, okay, I accomplished X, Y, and Z. Um, this was helpful, but I think I need some concentrated help. Well, you know what? Flip over to the Writing Center schedule and make an individual appointment and then talk to somebody about it. If for any other reason, you might think of the cafe as a type of place where you can be among other writers. You can get a little bit of guidance without individual attention in that way. But you also require yourself to stop for an hour of time or 40 minutes or whatever you have and write because sometimes the hardest thing about getting going as you mentioned Amy is finding that place that allows you to feel comfortable to write and in the absence of having the library open or the ACE open or being able to go to a coffee shop you know the Writing Center Cafe schedule might be a pretty good place to try I would say that something uh, that's really important to keep in mind, so we may be facing these challenges, but that is how, that is how growth happens. Um, this should not be, you know, a reason um, that somebody wouldn't succeed. So this is, I think, an amazing opportunity to develop those skills of perseverance that are going to be incredibly important life skills, you know, not just, um, you know, academic success, but in life in general. We're all going through this together, and, um, and I think that we can, we can grow with each other. We can share what's working for us um, and, you know, hopefully um, build some of that community that we may not be able to have necessarily in person at this point. We invite you to check out our WordPress site, mfdwritingcenter.wordpress.com. You can follow Amy's new blog there launching uh, this week, the week that this episode comes out. Um, you can also find that five tips for success in your online classes tip sheet that Dr. K um, created, and we are putting it out there for you. You can download that. In fact, many of the things that are on our WordPress site can be downloaded. Again, that is mfdwritingcenter.com. Dot wordpress dot com. We're going to put that description down. Um, we're going to put that link actually down in the description box. With that, we invite you to show us your hand. What kind of topics do you want to see us cover on the show and things to talk about? It could be writing. It could be um, 
kind of that academic lifestyle type of thing. You know, we want to know. What do you want to see? You can email us, writing at elusa.edu. That's W-R-I-T-I-N-G at O-L-L-U-S-A dot E-D-U. Um, unfortunately, it is only available for Our Lady of the Lake University students at either San Antonio, RGV, Houston, or on our online programs. Um, but hey, if you are from another school and you want to leave a comment or if you want to, you know, add something, drop it in the comments of our YouTube page. Okay. Um, one of the great things about Amy's blog is that this particular one, she has some really awesome questions um, at the end of her blog. Hey, if you go check those out and you want to share your responses to those, email them to us. Um, we are looking to feature those responses and any interaction we have with people um, on our weekly episodes. So, you know, if we get some emails and that next week, we're going to go in and we're going to talk about them. We can answer some questions. We can kind of address anything that maybe we left out. Did we leave something out that people are feeling? Let us know. Talk to us. We want to we want to communicate and talk with y'all. OK, uh, again, our email as well as all of our social medias are going to be in the description of the video. Uh, you can also send us a comment or a message on our Instagram page. It is Olu underscore Ace, O-L-L-U underscore Ace, A-C-E. Before we sign off for this week, I have a wild card for you. Uh, wild card, just to let you know, is just a little piece of information, a university resource or something that we think you can know, you should, you should know about that could be helpful. So this week's wild card is a shameless promo for the Academic Center for Excellence. Um, you can register to work with a tutor, to work with a writing consultant for the Writing Cafe. You want to try some of that open writing time and kind of, you know, work and share with others. Um, you can sign up with WC Online, our online scheduler, and you can access all of those schedules. Um, go to OLLUSA dot mywconline.com I'm going to toss that down below in the description box register a profile using your Olu email address okay and then you're going to have access to all of those schedules again that is ollusa.mywconline.com uh, this is only for Olu students though so you do have to use your Olu email to register Thank you for watching Playing the Ace. We have new episodes rolling out weekly, so make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page, follow our social media for those new episode announcements. Um, you can also talk to us via our social media. If there's something you want to share, send it to us, email us. We'll put all our information out there. Uh, with that, wear your mask, practice spatial distancing, don't forget to vote. For now, we say goodbye. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Thanks for listening, guys, and watching. Goodbye. Have a good day, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in. Please check out my blog, and please let me know, have you found a space? If so, um, how did you decide what was going to be best for you? What were the factors that determined that for you? We'd love to hear it. Definitely. We want to hear from you. Uh, wings up, Olu. And remember, our favorite tagline for playing the A's, don't gamble with your academic success. We'll see you next week. <laughs>